Good afternoon to all that are uh, really um, following us and watching all of the e videos that um, Angelica, myself, and the ODNE network was posting on YouTube channel uh, as a support of uh, OD work and bringing a bit more clarity of what it means to practice Gestalt in organizations. In, in organizations. And on our huge pleasure, we have today with us as a special guest, Hannah. Uh, Hannah, welcome. Uh, Hannah comes yes. from Norway and she is our dear friend and colleague for years now. And she's going to be the second one in row that today is going to speak about how Gestalt can be used in working in organizations while um, putting an accent on diversity and uh, how we can actually use all of these skills uh, to improve our work and to, um, according to me, myself, uh, make this world a better place for work and life, to be honest. So, Hannah, welcome, and Angelica, welcome to you, too. Uh, it's a pleasure seeing the two of you on this small screen uh, that we now share. It's very nice to be here. Very nice to be invited, and it's so nice to see both of you, and that is, uh, that is super. It's always super when we can share what we have been working. So for those of you who do not know Hana, I'm going to briefly introduce uh, her. So Hana Vozenekvam, you are currently working in Viking County Council as an advisor for diversity and inclusion at management level. For 15 years, you have been involved in cultural sector in Norway, both as an artist as an advocate for a more diverse uh, sector. You graduated Norwegian Gestalt Institute in 2015, and you have your own practice for two years. Now you're uh, using your therapy skills on an organizational level among leaders in the public sector. This is just a brief summary of all the amazing stuff that you're doing. So if you want to add something more, or if we have missed something, please feel free to add on. Or if not, I will start with the first question. Just bring it on. That was great. <laughs> so we will start this interview and of course the first question would be what was your first uh, encounter to Gestalt? What drove you to immerse yourself in Gestalt methodology? Uh, Angelica and myself know a bit from the sharings that we have but I would invite you if you can please share your beginnings and um, your start with the rest of the audience. Well I think for me it started from a point where I wanted to be be something for other people. I wanted to to help people out. Uh, I used to do it for free, so I thought, let me let me just make this my profession, so that I can both help people and earn money. To be honest, because I thought I have to put this what I do into a framework, because it's been like uh, helping friends is one thing, but being there for many people without having, you know, the, the tools was a bit difficult for me. So I thought, let me just find a place where I can feel safe and where I can be able to, to, to learn how to uh, put some dots on what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. And I've heard about Gestalt briefly from a few people, but I didn't know exactly what it was. So I decided to go on a meeting with, um, uh, like information meeting with uh, Dan uh, van Wallen, I think his mm -hmm. last name is, and then uh, uh, Elizabeth. And when I came into that meeting, it was so interesting because it was not this thing of selling me something just for me to say yes and let me start this school. It was more like uh, making me feel like if you if you like this style go for it if you don't leave so in a very gentle and kind way they were telling me that this is not for everybody <laughs> but it is for those who really want to 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 develop themselves and on that point i was like oh myself i hadn't really been thinking about myself because i was there to help others so i was also drawn to this thing that i had to engage myself, put myself in the center, uh, being able to understand me before I try to help others. You know, those things that sound so normal and, and something I might should have known before I got into Gestalt, but I didn't. I came with a view that, oh yeah, I'm gonna help everybody else. I'm fine, I'm, I'm cool. <laughs> so that meeting just 
it was like something just came over me and I was like, yeah, I want to do this. So I applied and I got in and four years of craziness, a lot of sharing, a lot of caring, a lot of uh, learning about myself, about, uh, yeah, different, um, like uh, how we work, how, how we uh, deal with each other in this world. And um, I came, actually, I came back to the school uh, two weeks ago, the school where it was before in Oslo. Mm. And it's not there anymore. But when I came in that door, it was like my body was just, so many things happened at once. And I was there for, a, for something totally different. So I had to tell the people that, sorry if I'm a bit weird right now, but everything is coming back to me from those days. And also the thing that it's been five years since I ended the school and I just realized how much I have learned um, about this thing of dealing with life and dealing with my own issues and dealing with all the pressure uh, that is going on. And I think Gestalt has really helped me get through things. And that's a great surprise because coming in thinking I should help everybody else. And actually what I've been doing is helping myself. And that was such a huge and beautiful surprise, to be honest. Mm. That was a long answer to your question, but uh, my first encounter was that information meeting that they really let me understand that if you really want to do this, do it. But if you don't, you don't have to. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's interesting. Thank you, Hannah, uh, for, for your sharing. Uh, you invited me to think a lot about uh, how, why, um, yeah, why is it important for us to work on ourselves uh, before we start practicing and while we are practicing Gestalt, regardless of whether we use it in one-on-ones or for group intervention. Um, it's primarily because we use ourselves as the instrument, so it's really important to build that resilience and to care for ourselves so that we can practice uh, all the methodology and the wisdom that comes with the approach. So it's, it's a nice encounter. And I guess um, that was the, the story for me too, um, receiving the sentence that this is not for everyone and that you either love it or you're yeah. not about to do it. <laughs> so I can resonate fully with what you just said. And also this thing of, you know, going into a room before I could think everybody else is an idiot. Mm. But me, I'm not the idiot. But after Gestalt, I've been like, who am I in this field? How do I interact? How do I make people react to me towards me? What do I do to make this room as it is? Uh, and that's so, so much more fun than being the one who's always pointing fingers at everybody else, forgetting the three fingers that are pointing back at me. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I, I really learned so much from this just opening my, my viewpoint, like going in many directions, not only one direction, but and in organizations, that's so important because I'm surrounded by so many people every day before the corona, of course, but mm. you know, this thing of going into different rooms every day. And I think for me to be aware of all the rooms I enter, who am I gonna see today? Who is, why is this person like this? Uh, it's not always about me, but I am there with that person. So then we must find out together what is going on. How do I uh, behave myself towards this person to get what I need? And, you know, all these things, I would never have thought of them if I hadn't gone through a stop. Mm. Uh, and it has taken me so much far than if I had just, I could have continued on that road of being very self-centered to be honest and i'm so happy that i haven't done that because it's extremely boring it takes a lot of energy and it's no fun mm -hmm. <laughs> and i like all of those things <laughs> i like fun i like being able to share and also and when, what i find interesting is the feedback i often get is that i'm very hannah you're so clear it's so easy to understand what to say it's, uh, we have a lot of fun. And I think that is not to, to brag about myself, but I think it's because I'm, I'm putting myself in a room 
knowing exactly why I am there. Having so much more f fun when I know uh, what I'm aiming at. Mm. Mm. Yeah. And it's uh, interesting how you brought the relational aspect of, of Gestalt, to be honest, and uh, how what you just shared relates to what uh, colleagues have been sharing previously, that Gestalt is relational um, by itself, and it, we do use ourselves as instruments, and it's important to learn a lot about how we uh, um, show up in a room, what's the energy that we have, how are we connecting to people, what does that mean, uh, how are we responding to different things, and et cetera, et cetera. So it's really something that um, Gestalt can enhance as a, as a skill and as a wisdom and knowledge, to be honest. And also this thing of not, you know, my defense mechanism is very high. Mm. I am a person, if somebody lash something at me that I don't understand, mm. I can easily get frustrated. I can say things that I don't mean. I can do those things that are like on, a, uh, on the spot, I don't mm. think. Mm. But after Gestalt, I learned, you know, how to like, wait a second, take it all in. Uh, so instead of screaming at the person or saying the wrong things, I would rather go oh, I got so sad right now when you said that, you know? Because mm. it's exactly telling people how I feel instead of saying, oh, you're an idiot, why did you do say that? Or trying to be tough about it. But it's like, it was so sad when you said that. I really felt it deep inside. And the reaction is totally different, you know, from the other person. So it's... Um, it's all these small things I use in my daily work, in even with in 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 uh, my my with my friends. So mm -hmm. yeah, it's interesting. Yeah, and I'm gonna welcome Angelica once again. Um, yeah, sir, sorry sir, to sir, all of uh, our uh, all the people that are watching this video. Uh, we're today struggling with internet connection. Uh, but we'll make it uh, work perfect after the end. I guess we all need <laughs> to adjust yeah. ourselves when working on Zoom and having yeah. uh, people saying, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Your image froze. So this only uh, reflects what's in the field, I guess, for all of us. Uh, and also being a Gestalt therapist in organizations during Corona, it's hmm. a totally different story. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> because uh, all of a sudden you don't have... You don't have the body language. You don't have the, you can, cannot look a person like, I can look at you, but it's a wall between us. And mm -hmm. uh, also this thing of me using my whole self, even when I talk, when you see my hand going like this, mm -hmm. because I use myself a lot. And also having to learn to, to use other tools than my body, you know, how does my, the sound of my voice, how is it now? And when do I pull back? When can I come forward? How do I see the other people in the, like, square? Mm. <laughs> On the, mm. it's, it's, it's a different thing. You, uh, Hannah, you work with equality, diversity, and inclusion in the public sector in, in Norway. Uh, how much Gestalt do you use in your daily work? Um, I was thinking about that because I don't think so much about how I use Gestalt in my daily work. Mm -hmm. But when I think about it, I use it every day, almost all the time. <laughs> because it's about, um, as I said, how I interact with people, how I'm taking feedback, how I'm giving feedback. Um, how we're how we're like um how we are together when we're we're because um in my field there's a lot of teamwork we're groups doing things together i'm seldom doing anything on my own i might be the the one in charge but you always have to get the people to work with you and mm -hmm. um, by doing that i have to you know center myself uh, and also looking at everyone that's around me and trying to figure out this one, okay, she liked this, she just 
don't like to be too much involved in this. So let me try to get her to do this. You know, it's instead of being like, hey, everybody, now we're going to do this and this is what I'm doing and this is how it's going to be done. And when we finish, we have to be like, ding, 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 ding. So even sometimes I go back to, the, to my Gestalt books and I read about awareness, for instance. I read about field, the field, who am I in this field? I read about this, um, where am I now? Am I in my head? Am I in my heart and chest? Am I in my inner zone, outer zone, all these things? It's, it's so good for me to work, like, it's like a toolbox for me. Hmm. It's like I have a big toolbox with a lot of rooms and I just take out the tool that I need in different settings. And it's such a great, like, I feel like it's, you know, like these uh, superheroes, they have all these different skills. Mm -hmm. And that's how I feel in, with Gestalt. I have all these skills, people can't see them, but they're there and I feel the effect when we get things done, when everybody's happy, when we can sit down after a job and say, oh, we, ma we managed this and, that's it's such a great feeling actually mm. Mm. i, I love the metaphor <laughs> <laughs> so and also this thing of being working in diversity and inclusion it's not easy because people are defensive from go from the go like from when i just say we're going to talk about gender for instance or ethnicity or the LHQBT um, uh, mm -hmm. then people will go, you will see it like, it's like immediately. So I have to learn ways of not making fee people feel ashamed and not making people think that, oh my God, she's black, I'm white and I'm, I have nothing to say here. Uh, it's like this white man's guilt and I always tell people I don't have time for the guilt I don't have time for your tears but of course I see them and I acknowledge them but we have to go further than that because we have to go we have to start to work we cannot we can go through this for like an hour or so and then we have to have to start to work because it's I don't have time for this <laughs> mm. and that's quite good because then people are like oh yeah okay she's not angry she's not coming to get us she's actually, she actually wants to do some work here but it's it's hard because it's very few in my department that talk about these things um it's hard to find allies mm. and i could have been bitter i could have been more angry than i am i could have been even giving up like okay i can do this little and then i can do other things um but that's not that's not working for me so that's also why i need the toolbox so that i survive in this environment so that i don't freak out and just go on a sick leave and stay there so so you know that the toolbox is there for so many things actually mm. yeah, and as you're saying this i'm just uh, you have been talking in the uh, previous um, questions about work, how you use Gestalt, but I'm curious in how you use Gestalt when you work in groups. So when you, you have just mentioned about uh, what are the challenges when you're talking about diversity and topics which are sensitive like LGBTQ community, gender, ethnicity, all those issues that sometimes are related to stereotypes and can have different impact or different responses from people. Um, mm -hmm. and just a quick question how do you use gestalt when you work in groups if you have a group of people or uh, if you need to work with a department what are the challenges and what from gestalt do you use in your daily work uh, honestly speaking i find it um, difficult to work uh, uh, with gestalt in groups at my workplace because that's not what i'm i'm hired to do mm -hmm. Like I'm not a Gestalt therapist coming into an office uh, where they want me to make a difference with my toolbox. So mm -hmm. I use it in secret <laughs> just from what I've learned from Gestalt. Mm. So that's the difference for me. I think it's 
I have met people who do this uh, as a living, going into organizations, working with Gestalt on certain issues, on certain problems, certain agendas. I don't have that, but I'm still using it because I know it works. I see how it works. But if I went to my boss and said, this is what I'm doing, I think he or she could get offended because they never asked me to do this. Even they see how it works, but I was not um, hired to do that. So it's a bit sad in a way because when I'm with clients, it's, it's, a, it's a, we have a deal that I'm the Gestalt therapist, you're the client, we're gonna find out something in this field together and it's an open space. Mm -hmm. But at work, I'm doing this as a part of me knowing something that the other don't know that they need, but I know that they need it, mm -hmm. <laughs> which could be uh, discussed as an interesting, um, uh, what can I say, like, a, it could be like a, something to discuss to see is this the right way to do this, because I've been thinking of it myself sometimes. Am I right to do it when people don't know that I'm doing it? And this is not like therapy one-on-one, -on -one, but it's just this thing of what I told you before on how to behave, how to interact, how to make people feel comfortable, you know, all these things. So, and I know that it's every, all of it is about Gestalt and what I've learned in Gestalt, but they don't know that yet. Mm. <laughs> You gave a really great example of using your Gestalt toolbox for resilience building for yourself, yeah. but also on that the Gestalt is a way of being that we yeah. talk a lot through the videos. Um, mm -hmm. And when we, we use self as instrument both as OD practitioners, but uh, also as internal change agents, uh, we don't mm -hmm. always reveal our secrets toolbox. No. Mm. This, this, I had this, this summer, I went to visit a friend and he started to say that, ah, there's this uh, woman that she's quitting now and she's going to do this gestalt uh, practice thing. I don't know what that is. It sounds so stupid. It sounds like something wishy-washy, yin-yang kind of thing. Mm. And I just looked at him and I was like, I've known this guy for now almost four years. I'm like, do you know that I'm a gestalt therapist? <laughs> And he was like, what? Mm. You know, he was like, he couldn't, he didn't know what to say. And we got this really interesting, nice talk about why he thinks that this is such a stupid thing. Uh, what makes him so insecure that he, ha that he has to call a person off for doing something new? And uh, how did he feel when I told him that I was a Gestalt therapist? Did he change his attitudes to, towards me hmm. and we really and he was like oh my god oh my god I didn't know and uh, I thought it was just this too but I, I see how you work Hannah it's I love the way you work and I said it's all about Gestalt my friend so you know it's all this uh, prejudice all these uh, layers that make me not go and say it too loud at work because then all of a sudden people will go from Oh, Hannah, she really makes things happen and it's so nice I have to go from, oh, who is she? Who does she think she is? You know? Mm. So yeah. it's, a, it's, a, it's a balance. Mm. Mm. Uh, and uh, I, I, I'll go on to the other side of the coin, uh, mm. uh, saying that uh, at the same time, the Gestalt community in uh, Oslo and in Norway, it's one of the biggest in Europe uh, and the, one of the most developed. Uh, uh, okay. The one which I've seen around. Hmm. Uh, and you're part of that community. Uh, and you're also part of the larger European community. Uh, how, how, where would you say is the Gestalt community, both in, in Norway and in Europe, or wider on issues of diversity, inclusion, and equality? I think I just have to talk on Norway because I'm not that well known with the European setting. Mm -hmm. But I think when it comes to where I like where we come from, when it comes to um, uh, areas of work, 
uh, like uh, where we studied, what we did, it's, it's very diverse. It's like mm. it's from all layers of society, it's from uh, yeah, all, all walks of life kind of. But when it comes to, to um, gender, when it comes to ethnicity, when it comes to people with um, like what you call uh, having problems with their bodies or whatever, it's uh, what do you call that? I suddenly forget disabilities. the word. Disabilities, thank you. Mm -hmm. And uh, you, all these things, it's, I find it ex to be extremely bad. Mm. Like it's, it's, um, I remember when I was a student, I was the only black person and every seminar I go to, I'm the only black person. Almost all the groups I'm in, I'm the only black person. And, uh, and there's always more women than men. Mm. And I think that's something we should address we should talk about and just raise the issue of how do we find our students? How do we get people involved? How do they feel welcomed in our space? Uh, I think that's, um, and it's also interesting in a Gestalt setting to look at it and just uh, discuss it. And I also thought after the Black Lives Matter movement, it's like, uh, how do we address racism? How do we address all the things happening in the world apart from Corona right now that mm. are affecting so many people? And how are they being met in, the, in, in our practice, in our therapy rooms, in our um, education? It's, it's I, I, I can't see it. I can't read about it. And... Mm. Um, and that annoys me a bit. That annoys me a bit. I, I can definitely hear you. And it's something that annoys me too. Um, and I think it's uh, what you just described can be, at least for the communities of Gestalt I know in Europe, it can be said that it's exactly the same mm. in terms yeah. of diversity. Um, and really the question for us as a community is to ask ourselves, what should we do? What are the next steps to start to work on it? Mm. Mm. And it's not an easy answer to it, but mm. it's at least something we should start to talk about because I think it could, uh, it could make us maybe understand uh, better how to, how to work with this. If we talk mm. about it, but if we don't talk about it, it just becomes silent, mm. and uh, that's not good. Mm. True, and it's. Um, I would agree on everything that the two of you shared, and I guess we all share a similar experience going to different events and happenings. It's really rel rel rarity to see people of different um, color. Uh, and um, settings in which we're going to freely talk about everything that's considered uh, what's the word I would I was about to say um, minority but it's not the word that I'm looking because this is even putting mm -hmm. um, discriminatory note on the aspect about LGBT community people with disabilities um, differences in religions and ethnicity all of these topics are something that we're not discussing openly and agree age. age yeah, age. yeah. especially mm -hmm. when it comes to how old you should be so that you can be good enough and all those mm -hmm. aspects so i think with, that we have a lot of work to do in that manner um, mm -hmm. on every field and this is also something which is also visible in organizations, even though a yep. lot of organizations oh, yeah. thrive and declare, and de and declare themselves as um, uh, diverse and international, that's pretty much never the case. Because then when you see the website, you will see only people that are white. And mm -hmm. it's not that they don't have people of color in their organizations, it's just that they're not posted. And of course, we do have organizations who are really uh, living and breathing diversity in all the sense. So 
I guess it's big. It's my, I feel it's my, it's like my um, life, life's work. Like this is my passion. Uh, mm. As you said in the beginning, Frostina, this thing of making a world a better place. Mm. Uh, because I feel like I'm, I'm, I'm like an activist as well as I'm a worker and an advisor. Mm. It's like I'm yeah. bringing my activism into the room and that is what drives me. It's this thing of, but look here, look at yourselves in this room. Who is not invited to this room? And if you were one of those per people not invited, what would you have done? Mm. You have to think twice the ne next time you say, why did this person do this or this person do that? Because mm. you are a part of it. Mm. End of story. So this is my way of just making people look at themselves. And it's so, like in my organization, it's easy to say, Let's work with integration, like making the refugees uh, feel safe, taking care of them, that they get a safe home, that they learn the language, blah, blah, blah. That's good, but it's easy because it's again about them. So if you don't look inside before you go outside, it's for me, it's, it's boring because it's mm -hmm. not fair that we are putting everybody else on the spot and not looking at ourselves. It's, and I also say in my county, we have 20.4% uh, people of uh, other minority groups. That's quite a lot. Mm -hmm. And inside the organization, we are three. And it's not good, good enough. And the first day I came to the office, I, the first person I saw uh, that had that I could feel you have something that I have was the washing man, the guy that washed the floor. Then I came to our canteen where we have our lunch. There were a few people there and there was one in the canteen eating and he was in the HR department and that was it. Mm. So, so, and we are 1500 employees. It's bad. <laughs> There was no one with disabilities. There was not young apprentices, nothing. So, so it's such a long way to go, but you know, little by little, it starts to, it starts to develop because mm -hmm. as long as I don't give up, as long as now I got more and more people that agree with me, now we can do things together. We can go into the rooms together. We can find solutions together. That's great. Hmm. That you're not alone all the time. Definitely. Knowing that you have support is really important when we do all of this job. Yeah. And what you just said brought me to the next question. Um, since you are someone who is pretty much serving as an internal change agent working for a county council, um, you have been discussing a bit about the challenges and the um, positive sides of working as a change agent, but uh, what are the challenges and positive sides of using Gestalt or having a Gestalt background while working in these kind of settings? Yeah, um, as I said, it's about, for me, it's about safety. <laughs> mm. Like I know something about something that I can use and uh, quite quickly see the effect of it, the positive effects of it. Um, and I'm sometimes I'm thinking what would I have been if I hadn't done the Gestalt and of course you never know but I'm quite certain that I would be burnt out a long time ago I think I wouldn't be able to do what I do without this in my backbone <laughs> Um, and that for some might sound a bit uh, like up in the air, but for me, it's, uh, I really mean it. And it's, and it's because I'm this thing of like, trying to, like, trying to gr grasp something before, before I, it comes out here, sort of. Trying to figure things out, trying to see hmm, what angle can I go in here, where can I go here? It's, 
it's so important for me and for my for my work it's just and that's i think that's extremely positive that i have this even when i had a breakup two years ago i think the gestalt got me through <laughs> because it it really helped me see who i am uh, focusing on me not focusing on the other person because it's impossible to to know understand the other person in such a situation so it's even then i thought even if i'm now on, on the darkest corner in my life i felt wow gestalt even helps me here you know mm. to understand what i can do how i can get myself out of this misery how i can find another therapist that i know that can help me and you know it's it's always people around you know that you can get the, your support from it's like from my older students like the the ones i went to school with i can talk to some of them there are groups when i was with you guys with the, with malcolm in the uh, gestalt in organization group it was like it's it's a network of helpers mm -hmm. <laughs> and that's also very important that you you there's always a gestalt person not so far away from you that can help you out mm. and that's also very nice did i answer your question yeah, yeah you have and i was talking <laughs> on that you have been talking in the previous uh questions a lot about the challenges and i was just reflecting on how gestalt is actually really beneficial when it comes to as uh, we have all mentioned before building resilience and learning mm -hmm. how to um, navigate through and to manage even really demanding and stressful situations mm. and we place this into our organizational context uh, talking something about what's in the room but not named requires a lot of self-support and a lot of resilience so that, we're, so that we can be able to bring it up and the challenges for me would there be uh, not knowing how the other person will respond not knowing how the dynamic will go but trusting the process and uh, being aware of where we are in the room and how we present in order to continue working and to create safe space for all. So mm -hmm. you have and also answered. knowing when, oh my God, I'm so, I'm, I got almost got a headache. Why do I have a headache? Oh, I've been in my head all day. <laughs> I didn't breathe. I didn't feel. I was numb from here down. Why? You know, all these things of being aware, being, going through things and see it in a Gestalt perspective for me is, is very nice and I also remember this cycle we had in school where we had this um, where you are on different stages like mm. uh, the level of stress the level of um, of uh, uh, when you feel that you have closed the circle when mm. it's not when you're in a stuck somewhere you know this it's mm. also a very nice thing to have in the back of my head where am I in the process right now Am I on a very high stress level or am I where we're starting to see something? Are we there where it's like, oh, and how, what are we going to do to make it pop? Mm. You know, it's, it's so interesting. It's, um, hmm. Definitely. Mm. We are almost at the end of the interview today. Uh, and for the yeah, last oh question. Oh my God, so quick. <laughs> <laughs> I talk too much. <laughs> No, <laughs> you, you, you gave me quite a lot to reflect on. That's nice. Really mm -hmm. Thankful for that. We are asking for uh, all our interviewees to tell a little story of using Gestalt in the workplace. Could be a funny story, could be a more traditional story, anything you, you, you want to share with us and our audience. Yeah. yeah um... For me, I think it's a story about how to survive when the Trojan horse is coming into the field. <laughs> mm -hmm. The one you didn't expect to come and stir the pot and turn everything around and make you invisible. And how could I deal with it? Of course, um, I cried a lot. 
I talked to people about it. I felt like this is not fair. I had this really good leader. Now this person comes in and it's terrible. I, my toolbox is closed. I don't know what tools to use to make this work out. And then simply getting a, su uh, a suggestion that talk to her, tell it like it is. And um, I was so scared, but I decided to do exactly that. And I put up a meeting in Outlook, did everything the right way. And we sat down and I was like this because I was really, really scared. And I told her exactly how I felt. Uh, and I even told her that I had thought of putting in an, um, a warning to the, to, the, um, to the HR department. Mm. But I was hesi hesitant to do it because I was scared it was gonna backfire. So my story, I think the, the, the title would be how to survive a Tro Trojan horse in the room. And the thing is that she's, she was so happy. <laughs> for me telling her everything and the thing is that she admitted how scared she was that everything she did was because she was extremely scared insecure she even had a kind of um, a diagnosis that uh, it's dif it was difficult for her to see other people to interact with other people um, and she was well aware that it could destroy other people around her but she didn't know how to deal with it and she always went for the jobs where she could be with people but she didn't understand why because she was not so good with people <laughs> mm. and she's very good in an interview situation so she gets the jobs and and we got a really nice conversation and it ended up with both being both both agreeing on not having to deal with each other that much like now she knew that she didn't have to come into my office and talk for hours about you know bullshit and making me sad and frustrated she didn't have to check me out every time what i did what i didn't do all these terrible things that a boss can do and she started and then she said i have to trust you and for for you telling me this now I trust you. And that's a very hard thing to put on an empl employee. It shouldn't be like this. But I learned that when it is like this, sometimes it's nice to confront the situation. And if it didn't work, I could do what I was planning to do anyway. But it worked because I calmed down, she calmed down. We managed the rest half of the year that she was there. And I managed to do things that I needed to do. So. No, I just thought I learned a lot from also how it is being a leader and being insecure. Mm. <laughs> how difficult that must be. And uh, you're supposed to be cool and you're supposed to be tough. You're supposed to not show feelings. And that's so sad because that's what I was longing for. I was longing for her to uh, recognize us recognize me, recognize the group, not putting us on the spot all the time. I was always scared when I came into a meeting because I never knew what she was going to say. But I was, let me, let me use Gestalt in that way, by confronting. That's also a way of dealing with things, not hiding it under a carpet, just So I think that's my, uh, my Gestalt story for you. Thank you. Thank you for the story, Hannah. And it's, um, it reminds me of a lot of situations that I have found myself into and I believe a lot of people have found themselves into not knowing how to respond to a particular situation and choosing dialogue as one of the ways. Because um, um, I guess when we meet the other person where, where they are, uh, dialogue can emerge as long as we're committed to um, to a dialogue and we're through to what we're actually saying and how we're saying it and how we're presenting yeah. it. And that's the relational bit, I guess, from, from Gestalt that we all strive for. 
Thank you, Hannah, so much for your time today and sharing um, your, your work and your stories. They were really inspirational. Um, Thank you so much. I hope I one day can come and see you in real life. <laughs> that would be awesome if, if we all meet once more in person. Yeah. Um, but until the field is not allowing that, so we can at least meet like we met today. And even though we were struggling with some uh, technical uh, issues and we had instable network, that didn't stop us from actually being in dialogue and reflecting on topics that affect us all and are quite important and I would say embedded in the practice that we all do. So thank, thank you for you so your much. time. <laughs> and thank you for, for bringing yourself in, in this way. Thank you. Take care. You too. Bye-bye. <laughs>